In today's video, you're gonna see some winter pruning, some carving, some hammering, and lots of gluing. Enjoy the video. Hi, and welcome to Blue Sky Bonsai. I'm Dave, and there is not a blue sky today. It's December, and it really is raining. Today, I'm gonna to be working on this hornbeam. It's quite a nice character bonsai. Um, still needs a lot of root work, so I'm gonna do a major repotting in spring. The hornbeam is a marcescent tree, which means it keeps its leaves on after the leaves have died. And I think that's probably to protect the buds. Um, it's not really necessary here in Madrid, so I'm gonna remove all of the leaves and we'll take a look at the uh, branch structure. We just cut each one off at the petiole. Really like the uh, ramification that's going on here. And you only see it when you remove the leaves. So that's it, defoliated. I'm pretty pleased with how it's looking. Very twiggy and ramified, so I love that. Now as I was defoliating, I saw a ladybird on one of the leaves. Ladybirds are always welcome on my trees because they eat scale insects and other little beasts. Unfortunately, it's dead, so we're going to remove it now. So now I've got to do some winter pruning. Now you might have seen on the community tab that I did a Christmas quiz asking you which branch must go. And I'll give you the answer right now. It's this one here. It's a secondary branch and it's just too long and straight and there are two branches coming from the same point. Comes out at the wrong angle, so we've got to get rid of that. So here we go, I'm going to cut this one off and leave a little stub. So it'll heal during the year and then I'll remove the stub next year. There we go. And now what I'll do is wire this branch to this branch so that it grows a little bit more outwards in that direction. So to wire this branch to this branch, what I'm gonna do is attach a very thin copper wire to each branch loosely and then tighten up the copper wire in the middle. About here. I use little plastic shields on the wire that I've um, taken off electric wires just to protect the bark. So that's what you see here. So now the idea is with the wire in place, I pull the branches together and then tighten the wire. So I'm making a little loop in the middle here and then I can tighten it so it holds the branches in the right place. That's looking pretty good. Now then when we view it like this, coming out we've got quite a bit of ramification here and this one kind of sticks up and then comes out so yeah I think this one should come off it's looking good now so here's just one more two coming from one big node and that node's already got quite a bulge so I'm going to remove this branch and leave this branch here And now it's getting too dark, so we'll call it a day. So it's now the next day and there is a beautiful blue sky here. And that's how I like working. Next job I've got to do on this hornbeam, let's have a look at the wound here from a few years ago. Got to turn that 
into a realistic feature. Now it's not going to be a quick job. Any work I do on it now is going to take a, probably a few years to heal over but it should make the trunk look a little bit more realistic just there. The idea here is that this wound needs to be tidied up so in a few years it's going to look a bit more realistic um, so we can sort of add to the taper remove the top part here that makes it kind of look like a, a lump it kind of sticks out this way this bark here is all very nice and I can try and use this bark to flatten down onto the wood that's called the Van Meer technique so here's my quick description of the Hans van Meer technique and I'll add links to Hans's bonsai blog and his YouTube channel in the description of this video. Go and take a look at his beautiful trees as soon as you finish watching this video. Now this is a two dimensional picture of your bonsai before you chop the trunk. And here you're already chopping it a little way above where you want the cut to actually be. And that's because in the van Meer technique the more spare bark you've got the better. And just inside the bark we also need to conserve the cambium layer and a thin layer of the sapwood too. Now we need to start carving into the core wood and I recommend using a rotational tool like a Dremel or a Bosch rotational tool. I'll also have my recommendations in the video description. You need to carve down into the wood trying to create the shape that your future trunk will be, making sure that you don't obliterate that thin layer of skin that we need to leave there. Again, it's very important not to carve into that cambium layer. Next, fold the flaps down onto the dead wood that you have carved and carefully hammer in some tiny nails to keep each flat tight onto the deadwood. Finally, apply a generous layer of cut paste to the whole area to protect it for the next two or three years. And now here's one I did two years ago on my Japanese pagoda tree and at this point in time I'm only removing the nails. In another year's time I'll remove the cut paste and inspect how it's calloused over. And now let's put the theory into practice. So I can cut down into here and just flatten the bark back onto the deadwood. I'm going to start by nobbling off this part here. So now the idea is to drill down into the deadwood and make a carving right down inside, leaving the bark and the cambium layer intact as far as possible. Let's see if we can make that happen. And now, time for a bigger drill bit. Now to finish off the carving I'm using this very fine point, I don't know how well you can see that, it's a very small drill bit, cone shaped with a very fine point and so that is going right down to the very point at which I want the bark to fold over. Now before I fold the flaps of bark inwards, let's take a close up with the camera and you can see what it looks like inside. So now with this knife, I'm gonna cut the exact lines where I want the flaps to fold in. Let's make a start here. Okay, that's one, 
this one folds in just there. Let's see the second one. Let's see, we want that to go across there. Let me just cut down here. Now this bit, unfortunately, will have to come off. And now that bit folds across nicely. That bit folds across nicely and that bit is okay. Now they fold across nicely and I'm actually going to nail them into place. Now we don't want to do the nails so far in that we can't get them out in two years time, but I think that will do. I have to tell you, the job didn't go as well as I'd have liked, but I hope at least it'll heal over quicker than a straight carving would do. And now we wait patiently for two or three years while the cambium works its magic. <laughs> <laughs>